All right, thank you very much, Emily. I would like to introduce JT from Liberty Hound, the hottest restaurant down at Canal Side. I think that's fabulous. And you said, you guys, when did you guys open? About two weeks ago. Uh, we opened, we did an uh, uh, event on Thursday, and then on Friday we did an open house, and then on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And all last week we were doing soft opening, doing limited menu, and then today or tomorrow, depending on uh, when the new menus get in, we're going to expand our menu. But we're starting to expand with more specials, doing uh, a lot of lunch specials. We have right now we have five dinner specials we're doing. Wow! All right, um, tell tell folks out there exactly where you're located. We're at, in the Naval Park, so if you go to the back of the Little Rock and the Sullivans, mm -hmm. it's right at the back. You'll see a big blue awning, and that's the restaurants. And you're open lunch and dinner. Yes, that's correct. We open it at seven 11, days? seven days a week, open at 11, close around 10, 10.30 on the weekends. And when we were talking earlier, I love it that you were saying that folks from like offices nearby, it's like a five minute walk from HSBC Tower? Yeah, we get a lot of uh, people coming down at lunch that just want to walk down and sit at the waterfront, have some lunch and go back to work, you know, escape okay. from the office for a little bit. Absolutely, beautiful site to do it as well. Today you're going to be making a seared scallop corn Makshu. Yes. How about that? He had to work with me on that one. Um, and this is a meal that, a dinner that is sold at the restaurant? We actually ran this last night. Um, we got some beautiful scallops in uh, from Boston and we decided to do a little New Orleans inspired dish. So we did seared corn, uh, seared scallops with corn makshu last night. Okay, we'll talk more about the menu in our coming segments, but let's tell folks what they need to cook this. Okay, it's really easy. Um, yellow bell pepper, plebano, or you can use green bell pepper depending on what you want. Celery, onion, red bell pepper, and corn, just fresh corn straight off the cob. Oh. And then I like to add a little garlic. And then this is something that we like to do. Uh, you can smoked. use normal bacon if you want, but what we're using is we're using a double smoked applewood bacon. I can smell, that's, that's bacon? Yes. I can smell that from here. So we get it in unsliced and we cube it out ourselves and it just, it permeates the whole house when you're doing it at home and the whole restaurant smells like it whenever you're cooking bacon. It smells delicious in here right now. We can't wait. And we're so glad that you're here. We'll, in our next segment, perhaps get started and also get more about the menu yep. at the Liberty Hound. Sounds good. All right, thanks. And with that, we're going to send it out to Amelia. Welcome back. We're in the kitchen with JT from the Liberty Hound right on the waterfront. Yep. So exciting that you're open now. Finally, right? Yes, finally. And today we're making scallops and makshu. Yes. New word for me, makshu. Makshu comes from New Orleans. It's basically a Creole style cream corn. And I had a little taste of it, and it's delicious. So if you're wondering what to do, you want to go out for dinner, lunch, go to Liberty Hound and get it. Yeah, we're going to be doing all kinds of different uh, areas of the United States. So basically, we're trying to celebrate the harbors of the United States on Buffalo Harbor. How cool. So. Okay, so what are we doing in our dish now? Okay, scallops, whenever you get your scallops, they, you got to do a little bit of prep on them. There's a little foot right here that mm -hmm. you can see. It actually looks like a little different color on it. So all you got to do is just pull that off because this part doesn't cook very well. Okay. So you just pull that off, get rid of it. And the bacon I showed you earlier, what we did is we started it in the saute pan mm -hmm. to slowly start rendering it. And then we added our corn to it. Okay. And we're going to start cooking our corn with that. So do you want to cook the bacon fully before you put the corn you in? You want to cook it about 90% through. You okay. don't want it to be super crispy yet. You just want it to start getting some of the uh, fat rendered out of it so you can saute in it. And okay. That's what gives it all the flavor. And then while that's going, you can have your vegetables ready. You can have your small dice of yellow bell pepper, poblano. If you don't like it too spicy, you can use green bell pepper. Okay. If you like it really spicy, you can add jalapeno okay. instead. It all is up to you. Get your a little bit of celery ribs, red bell pepper, and white onion, and a little bit of garlic. So once you get all that set up and your corn starts cooking, you want to look for a nice brown on your corn. That's what's really going to give it a nice flavor to it. Okay, so are we starting to see that? Yeah, we're starting to see a little bit of it. It's starting to caramelize just a little bit and the corn will actually start popping when it starts cooking. Okay, so we're going to head into break right now. We'll add all those ingredients in. Vic will be back in the kitchen finishing up for our long cooking segment coming up next in the hot sauce. We're going to get some advice for parents who want to talk to their kids about distracted driving. And then we're going to head back out to Matt who will be live at Tim Hortons later in the show. Stick with us. We'll be back in two minutes. Our kitchen is not as busy as where you are right now. Thanks, Matt. I'm with JT from Liberty Hound, the newest restaurant at Canal Side, hot place. People going for lunch and dinner seven days a week. There is limited seating. Yes. What, you said 45 inside, 45 40, out in the patio? Yeah, about 45 inside, about 45 out in the patio, but uh, we have a lot of standing room for, so you can be on the pier, standing right next to the boat, seeing over the canal for having some cocktails overlooking. Nothing better 
than that during the summer to be at that location. Um, all right, you are making scallops yes. and a mock shoe. Yes. Corn mock shoe. That's correct. All right, so I'll stir the corn mock shoe. <laughs> and you're getting ready to sear the scallops. So I've got a really hot pan that I added a little bit of butter to so it starts to brown just a little bit without burning. And I took the scallops and I just seasoned them with a little bit of sea salt. And then you turn it upside down so the salt is on the bottom? That's correct. Why do you do that? So, because you want to get the salt seared into the scallop. You don't, oh. want, you don't want the uh, salt to fall everywhere. You want to get it nice and seasoned, make sure that everything's in there. Okay. And then we're going to let that sear on high for about one minute until it starts to get nice and brown on one side. Can you overcook scallops? Yes. I think you I can. ask that every time that somebody's cooking scallops. How do you know when they're done? Uh, force of habit is a lot of times, so you want to watch them, and they'll actually, a uh, quick trick is you'll see them. So you want to be able to watch them. If they look like a lot of liquids coming out of them, you overcook them. Oh, really? They want to stay dry. Do they get dried up like shrimp? Yes. Yeah, they get really dry. I'm actually going to add cream to this right now. So this is that makshu we made earlier, that corn that we've sauteed and caramelized. Yep. So I've just added a little bit of uh, blackening spice to it and some fresh chopped thyme. Yum. And then we're going to let that cook for probably about 30 minutes. Okay. And then I have some I did earlier, so right here. That's what it's going to look like when it's finished. Oh, you're a pro here. Um, while we're cooking the scallops, we've got some video of the opening of the Liberty Hound. Let's talk a little bit about the restaurant. Now, there, that is the bar area. That was, um, is that like mm -hmm. opening night, soft opening? Yeah, that was the soft opening right there. Uh, that's the outside view of the patio. And then that's inside the restaurant itself. Now, right do you here. have a, a bar? Yes, we have a, a full working. bar that's probably one of the most beautiful bars in Buffalo. Um, all custom hand done. Wow. Every, uh, the bar top has been hand planed. There's not a single piece of sandpaper on it. Oh, you're kidding. So it was all hand done. Um, what kind of food do you have at Liberty Hound right now? Right now we're, trying, we're playing with the idea of doing, being that seafood restaurant in Buffalo, being that go-to seafood restaurant. So we're having seafood brought in um, every day from Boston. It's being driven over and pretty fresh much fresh right from Boston. Fresh right from Boston, straight out of the fish markets. I'm actually going to show you guys. When your scallops start to look like this, oh. they get nice and brown. Go ahead and flip them over. Now I threw a little bit of fresh thyme in there because I, I like the flavor of fresh thyme with the scallops when you're sautéing it. So you just have to leave it in there and it'll automatically it in infuse the flavor yep. of the thyme. So all that butter that's in there, yep, will just infuse right in that flavor. Okay. So we're going to let those cook for about another 20 seconds. What, but what does thyme taste like? What kind of flavoring is it? It's very savory. Um, it works very well. Thyme works very well with sweet dishes and chicken because chicken has a natural sweetness to it. Oh. So anything that's sweet, thyme really works well because it adds that depth of flavor to it. Okay. So anything that's got a strong, strong flavor, mm -hmm. Time usually isn't what you want to use. You want to use something that's a little bit subtler, a little bit more this sweet. This seems perfect then with the yes. scallop. Okay. So as you can see, you can actually tell when you're uh, cooking scallops, you want them about rare in the middle. Yes, so they're kind of soft. So they're nice and, and yeah. soft and they melt in your mouth. So you can actually see by pushing on them with your tongs or yep. whatever, if they give a lot, a trick that I always tell everybody to do is this part of your hand right here, it should feel like this. Okay. So if it feels like this and you feel your scallops, then you're good. Can you undercook them? You can, but scallops are really good if you have a ceviche for all scallops. All oh, right. So it's so, better undercooked than overcooked, definitely. Right. You definitely don't want to undercook them. Okay. Or overcook them. We've me. got about 30 seconds left. Just to remind folks, Liberty Hound right at in Canal Side in the Naval Park. Yes. Seven days a week, lunch and dinner. What time do you guys close? Do you have a about drink? About 10. 10 uh, o'clock. The bar's usually going to start closing around 1, depending on how it is. Uh, we're not going to be that late night bar. So real quick, I'm going to add a little bit of white wine Ooh. to this. All right, and when we come back, we'll give it a try as well as do our second helping. Sounds good. All right, JT. All right. We're going to take a break. We're going to see what it's like outside, what you can expect. Stay around. Okay, back in the kitchen. I am going to be trying the scallops right now, but JT, tell me about these again. John, can you take a shot of these beautiful greens? These are little micro greens. So these are actually uh, baby greens that are only about two weeks old. So you get really intense flavors in just a very small package. So they vary from everything. You could do micro arugula all the way up to lamb's tongue or a um, amaranth, which is, this that one? one's a sorrel. It tastes like a beet. I tried it before. I love yeah. them. 
A lot of times you can actually get micro beet tops, so you get the beet flavor without having to cook the beets or have to braise the greens. It's very delicate. It's just something that chefs that like to do put on stuff to make it look pretty. And, and we were talking earlier about asparagus, and you told me what about asparagus if you just let it grow? If you just let asparagus grow, it's actually, it, look, it will look more like a tree. It'll get about six, seven, to eight inches around and just keep growing. But a lot of times people just knock them down or cut them down, and then by the time they get to that, the actual tops of the asparagus start to flower out, and it doesn't look like asparagus anymore. So it looks, okay. All right, I've, got, I've left you only 30 seconds for a second helping, but you will take all the leftovers for the mock shoe? Yep. What you can do, there's two things you can do. You can save this for the next day, which is still really good, mm -hmm. or you, instead of adding the cream, when you have your sautéed corn and all your vegetables in there, Chill it down and then toss it in your salad the next day, and you can use it for um, like a roasted corn salad with arugula, or you could use uh, spring mix. And it's really great for anything like you can add chicken, grilled chicken to it, and have a nice grilled chicken, southwestern style or southern style. Without the cream, how long could you leave it in the refrigerator? A couple days? A couple days. Without the cream, you could probably leave it in your refrigerator for about four days. I wouldn't go too much more than that, but. I have to tell you, this is delicious. I'm going to invite all my friends back in here. Oh, friends. <laughs> Come on, Amelia. Come on, Matt. John doesn't want me to come in the kitchen. I'm walking in front of the shop. You know Hi. why? Because I told them I want to eat this all to myself. Some of the menus, um, uh, items on your menu. Yeah. Just a quick. We have our um, Liberty uh, Liberty Ale braised mussels uh, sautéed with bacon and blue cheese and caramelized onions, which are my favorite. And then we have the chorizo steamers, which are little necks with chorizo, tomatoes, and fresh basil thrown in there. Are really awesome. Our fish tacos are out of the world, mm. too. Will you come back again? Of course. Make one of your, your favorites. Okay. I'm sure this is one of them. No problem. Um, remember that. Liberty Hound. Tomorrow, we're going to have Zilly Cakes. And we'll talk about the